And uh, we have mentioned this briefly in the previous weeks as the two quoque argument, or it's sometimes called the what about argument, or the argument based on what about ism. And the two quoque. Let's spell that and, and in case people want to look it up and describe it a bit more. Two quoque is Latin. And it's T-U, T-U is you, right? Many Romance languages, right? Italian, French, uh, Spanish have this too, right? You, familiar. Quoque, Q-U-O, Q-U-E. Q-U-O, Q-U-E, quoque, it means you too, or you also, or what it means in, in real translation is you do the same thing, or you do the same thing and worse. Now, it's a very old uh, kind of argument. It's a logical fallacy, right? The Greeks, uh, the Latin, the Romans knew about this, right? And uh, I guess under Roman law, that must be where this this uh, expression comes from. It, the general idea is that it is no defense if you're arraigned for some kind of a crime. It, it is no defense to say somebody else does it, or even to say you, the judge, or you, the prosecuting attorney, you do it too, or you do that and more. You do that and things that are even worse, right? So uh, it's, it's also known as what aboutism because it's, it's, for example, you ask Sarah Huckabee Sanders, what about that meeting with the Russians? And she'll say, yeah, but what about the meeting with the Ukrainians over at the Democratic National Committee? Or you ask Trump, what about that meeting with the Russians? He'll say, what about Hillary Clinton's 33,000 emails and, and so on down the line, right? So I think people have to be more aware of this. Um, it is a logical fallacy. In other words, it's a, it's a dodge, obviously, but it, it has a special quality to it. And it has a history. It has a history of just to, to look at a couple of recent moments. If you go and look at this movie, Judgment at Nuremberg by um, Otto Preminger, I guess it is, You'll remember it's um, Burt Lancaster as the uh, as the Nazi judge, and Maximilian Schell as the German defense lawyer at the Nuremberg trials. And uh, there's this moment where the the uh, Allied side, right, the U.S., the British, the French, and the Soviets, they put on some films about concentration camps and the. Uh, Maximilian Schell, the defense attorney, he objects and he says, how can you accuse us, you who have put atomic bombs on civilians in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, you British who have firebombed Hamburg and killed 50 or 60,000 uh, people, civilians, how, how, how do we rate this kind of special uh, treatment? And that's the two quoque argument. And that was that was uniformly uh, a pleading by these different defendants, right, from Goering to, uh, well, the, the whole crew. They all tried to do this. They all tried to say, this was war. You did the same thing. You even did worse things and so forth. So this was disallowed. Now, of course, it, as a political ploy, it has some effect, especially because it's very often the case that the things they're talking about are real enough in that case, right? However, if you look at it in the current context, to say the answer to a question about the Russian collaboration, collusion, the Russian meetings and so forth, and the pattern of constantly denying the Russians, to say that that equates to something else, you'd have to think about the orders of magnitude. You'd have to say, how big was this? How important was it? How many people were involved? How many lies were told to to hide it, right, even under conditions where it was likely that that was going to be uh, found out. For example, would you say that the U that the president of Ukraine, right, Pornoshenko, right, who we don't like here, right, we, it's clear, it's Pornoshenko, but if President Poroshenko, the chocolate king of Ukraine, the president, had given an order to the Ukrainian intelligence saying, I want you to concentrate your efforts on on flipping the U.S. election against Trump, right? Because that's what it would have been, because Trump was seen as too friendly to Moscow, and that's what the uh, the Ukrainians, the current government anyway, doesn't like, the government in Kiev. 
Um, did uh, Poroshenko issue such an order? We don't we don't have it. Uh, did this then lead to this huge effort with thousands of bots and hundreds and hundreds of fake news stories, manufactured scandals, ping pong pizza parlor, uh, pedophile story? Did that, you know, did, was there anything similar in magnitude to that? Uh, apparently not. And then you'd also have to say, did Chelsea Clinton uh, and Podesta and MOOC sit down with Russian, or in this case, Ukrainian representatives? Did they sit down with the Ukrainians and talk about something to do with how to how to get this stuff circulating, how to use it, how to put it out? Apparently not. So in this case, the two quoque argument, in addition to being a fallacy, it is a dodge. Now, the the, the general idea with the two quoque is that it expresses a contempt for reality. In other words, it's it's a way of denying the relevance of reality. It's a way of saying it's all in the realm of opinion. And my opinion, uh, if you have a bad opinion of me, I get to have a bad opinion of you, and then we're even, and we don't, you know, that's the end of it. Right? We don't we don't get anywhere. The other thing specifically is that it's not just the Nuremberg defendants who used this on the allies, right? And the allies were the the countries that I mentioned before, but that Soviet, Soviet uh, Russian propaganda tended to rely very, very heavily on the two quoque, the what about um, uh, argument. You can go online, take a look at the Wikipedia article on two quoque, and you will you will see that they actually titled this page the the form of rebuttal which is you lynch black people. And this is this is what it was, that the US, right, the US information agency, the Voice of America would come out and say, ah, the Russians, the Soviets, they're keeping all these captive nations, all these subject nationalities in Eastern Europe. And the answer to that from the Russian Soviet side was to say, yeah, but you have lynchings of black people in America, right, in the American South. And that got to be, a, a kind of a cliche in the Cold War. Uh, it was heavily, heavily relied on. And the uh, at the time that the Soviet Union was breaking up, say the late 80s and the early 90s, right? Because that's when it did break up. There was a, a tendency, even, even in, in Russia, right? Even in the Soviet Union and then in the Russian Federation, to use this term you lynch black people cynically sure they would ref that was a way to refer to soviet and communist uh, propaganda now that's obviously it's a provincial reading from the point of view of these people but you get the idea that if you wanted to say i don't like this kind of propaganda which is always based on buck passing they would say i don't like this this stuff about always bringing up the fact that the other side uh, lynches black people, which of course it did, did without a doubt go on, is a very very serious matter. But in this case, uh, as I say, with Trump, it's there's there's nothing anywhere near that serious. It's referred to by, in particular, this guy Václav Havel. Václav Havel was a playwright, and he was part of a of an operation called Charter Seventy Seven. And I'm sure the CIA had a hand in that. And I always had the impression with this guy that Freemasonic networks in Czechoslovakia were were um, a part of his success. But Václav Havel then became the very famous president of uh, Czechoslovakia as long as it lasted, right? Because it then it divided between uh, Czechs and and Slovaks. And he he did an entire essay about this two quoque. What about ism? And he found that this was a, you know, a, a very cynical demagogic trick. Really, the the total of Soviet propaganda would hardly be be uh, would be possible because, of course, it wasn't just limited to the narrow stuff that we've been saying so far. They'd do it about anything. They'd say, you know, you have people living in poverty, or you've just had riots, uh, and they've done this lately, right? They say people are getting shot in the streets. You're having a civil war like Beirut 
in your cities and on and on and on. 